Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League yesterday. Highly entertaining evening. Especially the 9 o'clock slot, yes, yesterday, I mean the first 10 minutes of uh, goal, 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 disallowed goal, 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 was going all crazy and I again thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Late on it became of course... Um, do do I need to buy now another jersey to have of every semi-finalist jersey? In the end, it fell all my way because I'm packing video tomorrow, but I have a Rangers shirt, so I was very happy with that one because that was. I was hope, hoping to have the Rangers shirt even, even, even sooner, but I basically said if Rangers make it to the quarter well, finals, I talk talk to Eddie. I'm gonna get a Rangers jer jersey. It literally just arrived for this video. I said, oh no, if they're not getting eliminated, then I have to get a Braga shirt. I'm not sure if I would have gotten. Uh, that is not gonna be fun. Yep, Rangers jersey. Hey, yay, 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 yay. And uh, of course, uh, there's one more team. That's the only one, Atalanta. Did not do good, and so there's one team where I don't have a jersey at the moment in my collection, although that one team has a really, really nice one that I like. On the other side, you know how much I love the RB teams, so yeah. But that's my personal story uh, for this evening. I think overall uh, the story is that I think Almost all the big fairy tales ended. However, arguably one continued. Yes, we can say West Ham is kind of a fairy tale because they have never been in the position uh, as is Rangers. But um, overall, I would have expected West Ham and uh, Rangers to actually advance over their opponents. So, uh, hence, I don't see it as much of a fairy tale. But especially in the Conf, 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 Conf League, uh, the Bodo fairy tale uh, did end, the Park fairy tale did end. Uh, they again, I mean, the first power game I made it was a quarterfinal. If you make your chances, you could be in there. Um, in a way, Slavia's fairy tale also ended. Um, so, yeah, Frankfurt though, Frankfurt continues. Boy, and that is the game that basically grabs all the, head, 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 the headlines. And I have to say, it was weird watching for me because, again, like last time around, I found myself cheering for West Ham over a French team and I found myself cheering for Frankfurt over Barcelona, a team that I always put in my uh, top three, top five uh, teams that I support. However, at the moment, I don't feel it. And it was so cool to see a Frankfurt team, which with a coach that I really like, I had, I had admittedly, go to Barcelona, boss them around, and in, in addition, the Frankfurt fans are almost, if not at par with the rain Reg fan. They come to your town and they make their presence felt, but not in a very negative way. And then in, in addition, they of course take the chance to snatch up as many tickets as possible, whatever it may cost. And so, the crowd was almost 50-50 in the camp now. You saw white jerseys everywhere. And to me, this is also something, something that is so typically Barcelona. Yeah, we have vacation, we sell off, off, off the things. We don't care who, who, who we're selling to. I always have a problem with the Barcelona crowd because they, it, they have such a great club. They are very well known for a beautiful football, uh, which is something that makes them very, very li likable. However, the few times that I've been in Barcelona, there was only one game where I really thought, oh, this is a great atmosphere. Yes, I've never been to a Clásico. But I want to have that so-and-so uh, and, so and not, not always this uh, politely clapping and, you know, not really being in, 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 into it. And that was really show. The Frankfurt fans, they care about their team. They go there and they support it and they are fully behind it. So I actually, it, it was something that I really, really enjoyed. As usual, uh, we'll go a little bit through each game and tell you what is. I mean, I saw the uh, conference, so uh, uh, goal show, uh, switching back and forth of all these, these games. So I have a little bit more idea of the early games than of the late games. Although I honestly, that was also, also the time I missed the first few minutes. And then, you know, uh, with kids needing to go to bed, blah, blah, blah. It's, also, it's never uh, that I can pay full, 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 full attention. Uh, and we'll start, of course, in the Europa League. Uh, I was thinking the other way around, but let's do the Europa League. Um, first, 
Atalanta, while they did control largely the game, they could not create as many chances as one would hope for. And uh, at least if you're like me, uh, um, more on the for the Italians. And over Leipzig, I support almost any team, I would say. Uh, or I, I would support any team. I'm not sure. Yes, probably. Probably, probably, probably not. Uh, discussion for now. <laughs> this time. Um, but, you know, Konrad Leimer, uh, they launched one wonderful content attack by Konrad Leimer. He could play it over to Silva. No, he plays it a little bit further back than Kunku. Empty net makes it 1 0. Uh, then they even missed uh, for just a hair. Uh, Andre Silva, if he gets his foot on that one, well, it could easily be 2 0 at the half, and the game is done and does it. The second half. Atalanta tried, but they really could not do much, except for two free, uh, two penalties in this situation. One after Malinowski free kick, where I think the ball hits the hand and then goes like that, and not directly on the head. But uh, referee Laos took a very, very long look at that one. I was faintly hoping for a penalty, but I, I kind of saw, yeah, it goes like this, and yeah, then the question, the question is, is, is it okay if I have the hand like this, that... Um, uh, that the ball hits here. I would have loved to see a penalty. However, I thought late, so, thought later late on Hattabur was clearly pulled on the jersey in the box. That needs to be a penalty. I think there uh, Atalanta can be aggrieved, but then they give up a penalty them themselves. Leipzig played actually quite well in this uh, second leg. I think they overall deserved, despite um, um, Atalanta maybe having a little bit more of the game, I thought that Leib Leipzig was definitely a more mature team. It was exactly as I feared. It was exactly as, as feared. Atalanta missed the chances in the first uh, leg. And I knew that uh, going to Bergamo, it's not going to be easy because uh, Leib Leipzig can afford themselves to hang back a little bit. So one German team through. Uh, we have another German team through with Frankfurt, who, as I said already a little bit with, uh, about the spectators, absolutely brilliant display from Frankfurt. Barcelona is a more talented team than Frankfurt. There are no two ways about it. However, they were brilliantly adjusted by Coach Glasner to, um, uh, to play Barcelona. They had the fortune to get an early penalty. And I think what Eric Garcia is doing there by hugging more or more or less, it is stupid to do that in that situation. Um, so Kostic makes it very early on 1-0. Then Obama Young, who had a, a stinker of a game, misses Prey, basically the only chance. And uh, Frankfurt really did what Barcelona doesn't like. Attack them high, press them hard, do the same thing as we did in the first leg. Barcelona, of course, a little bit light like Bayern was uh, thinking that maybe the atmosphere at the Camp Nou will intimidate the, uh, the uh, Eintracht Eint 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 Frankfurt. No, it's not going to intimidate if half the stadium are full of Frankfurt fans. That's not going to be intim in, 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 intimidating. And so you already lost that psychological battle. Then you get the early penalty. You're not playing really well. Uh, Frankfurt is really uh, cutting into all your weaknesses. And then Boré unleashes a shot in the 36th minute. It was just a wow moment. I just was sitting there. There's, uh, you know, watch, watch again. He take, 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 take shot. I was yeah, wow. What a shot that was. It's 2 for Frank for Frankfurt. And in the second half, it could have been more. Kostic makes it 3-0. Yes, there was right after half. There was one where Obama Young just misses by hair. This one needs to go in. Then we talk a, a probably pro, 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 different game. Uh, I think Martin Hinteregger after the game said that it was such a, a, a game that was played in the head where you had to be mentally always be on top of yourself in order to pull this off. And it, it, it was more mentally than physically draining this game for most Frankfurt um, uh, players. As I said, with 3-0, it looked all done and dusted. Then Barcelona pulls on back, it's called for offside. Busquets then with another great shot gets the goal. And then there's a huge stoppage time because there was, I think, a penalty call for Barcelona, which I actually think this would have been ridiculous to give the penalty. Uh, you know, but on the other side, it's similar to, to, to the Atalanta. I think in both cases, it was probably all right to not give a penalty. Um... So, and then, you know, there it took five minutes and the headset or whatever needed to be I mean, it was a nine-minute added on time 
for a game that probably didn't need all that much time and Barcelona pulls back two goals with a penalty that was also a little bit on the softish side, to be honest. So yeah, um, you could see that at the, at the end Frankfurt was hanging on to win this game, uh, but overall they fully deserved it. They were deserving to win in Frankfurt, they did not. They completely dominated that game. And what about those Frankfurt fans? Uh, again, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, that's coming from uh, someone who has never really supported the German team so much. But I have to, I have, have to say I find a real liking uh, to Frankfurt uh, these days. Lyon dominated for 30 minutes over West Ham. Uh, it seemed only a matter of time until the goal comes and then Dawson from a short from after a corner kick heads it in and Declan Rice a shot that takes a very weird deflection uh, makes it 2-0 before the half turns the game completely on its head and right after half uh, Gerard Bone makes it 3-0 and a game that should have gone actually Lyon's way completely went West Ham's way and from that moment on West Ham could control it now I, if I look at their respective league forms and how, how they've, they've been performing, I actually always thought that West Ham is the better of the two teams. However, um, over the two games, I think Lyon was always a little bit more dominant. I'm it was a rather lucky win overall for West Ham. Still wearing West Ham. Because, as, 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 as I said, I actually do like the story. And, um, yeah... I think they are the one team left in the competition that really could challenge Leipzig, but we'll see that in very, very soon, I would say. And then the last one, as I said, became a little bit of, uh, you know, me wanting to have Rangers win, especially because I just got a Rangers jersey. And yes, of course, for Andy, because I know he supports the team, so I was happy. And I know another uh, former colleague who is very much for Rangers. Um, other than that, I was... You know, on the onset, I, I probably was more or less neutral on, on it. But, you know, having a Rangers jersey flipped it around for me. Uh, and Rangers, who did not do anything in the first leg, came out storming and bossed Braga left and right. Tevenier, or in the second minute, makes a goal. Then a goal is this disallowed from a roof in the fifth minute because there was a little handball Again, it was not directly, it was before the cross kick came I in. Mean, so I also found this a little bit curious how uh, they, they, they decided to uh, call that one off, but okay. So, so, so be it, but Rangers just kept going at it, but missing chances. Um, and just when Braga kind of tried a little bit going, going forward, they get caught on, on, on the counter, a wonderful uh, deep ball. And I think it's uh, Ruf who is getting pulled down in the box, or was he? Seemed like a rather innocuous contact. Um, I thought that the red card for that was maybe a little bit harsh, but you know, I guess if you give the foul, 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 you gotta give the red card too. But I honestly thought it was a bit of on the tough side. In any case, Tavernier pays as, as up 2 0, and that was a fully deserved scoreline. And you think with a man up, it is only a matter of time. It can only be a mad a matter of time until it's three, four, or, 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 or whatever. The chances were there. They just didn't, they didn't make it. And then with the only shot on goal, almost like let me figure it out. Corner kick, Garmo heads it in. Overtime. And at that point, then suddenly you saw Rangers losing it a little bit. I mean, uh, all the confidence and the self-assuredness going forward, suddenly gone. Uh, so in overtime, though, it came back a little bit and uh, Roof makes it after uh, an, a nice Arrivo assist, makes it 3-1 in the 101st minute, at which point all hell broke loose in Glasgow. And then uh, Braga really hurt themselves once again uh, with Medeiros. Uh, yes, it was probably a yellow card of uh, foul. I have, I have to say the ref was particularly poor in this game. Uh, I really thought he did not have a really good control of that game. Uh, but that was a yellow card. And Hamaderos then comes, goes into his face to pick up immediately a second yellow card. And uh, get against off is one of those idiocies that you don't see very, very, very often. 
Um, right then, halftime, our field comes out for Ruf, who had been working his butt off. And as I said, he scored two goals that uh, one was, I think, offside. The other one was, um, he scored two, two goals in, in addition to the one that he actually scored. And the one was with the hand, hand, hand ball. So he worked, worked himself out. Our field then, I mean... You know, when I think here Arfield, I kind of hear Garfield, but I think there's a reason why this G got dropped. He doesn't deserve it. The chances that this man missed, I mean, you can win three games with that one. That game should never have gone to overtime. That game should never have been in balance. I, I actually saw a so kind of the Braga will get a goal, will go into the penalty shooter, will win the penalty shooter. This was all happening this way. Fortunately, did not. I don't need me. I mean, I should get a Braga jersey sooner or later, uh, but I don't need to buy one now because you know it's already a little, a little, a little bit. Time. It, may, it may be not the best time to get a Braga shirt. So yeah, Rangers through, and so in the Europa League, we've actually. Uh, I enjoyed yesterday the variety of places that it was where they but now it's the uh, United King, King, King Kingdom against Germany. We have uh, the Rangers army going to Leipzig and the Frankfurt army going to West Ham. Uh, really, really, really interesting ties. I have to have to say, I mean, Leipzig, uh, as we'll see, are the huge favorites over Rangers. Western Frankfurt, probably a little bit more even, but, um, you know, I can see it going e either way. For me, if you ask me, I would love to see a Rangers Frankfurt final just because of the fans. Because uh, both of these will bring the masses to Seville. And that will be interest. That would be interesting to see. Although I think a Leipzig West Ham final is a bit more uh, likely. I do not want to see an all German final. But if but if Leipzig goes in, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't as I said, want to see an all German final. That's the only thing. Um, as I said, Leipzig are the big favorites. Uh, it's actually rather uneven. I mean, we have Western Frankfurt is a little bit more even. Leipzig are huge favorites over Ra over Ra Rangers. Of course, I'm going to put my support. I, I would love to see Rangers uh, go on. Uh, but Leipzig at the moment are almost 40% to win this whole Euro Europa League uh, with Western at 27 and Frankfurt at uh, 20%. Moving on to the Europa League where PSV Eindhoven uh, took an early lead uh, after a really bad build-up uh, from uh, um, got in 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 intercept by Götze who plays it into Sahavi who from acute angle makes it 1-0. PSV actually uh, was probably at the first half hour the bad better team but then uh, they kind of fell back a little bit too much and Leicester really got, got, got going but missing chances. I think uh, Lukman we missed one Pats and Ducker was once running free on goal. Uh, however they finally get their goal in 77 to, uh, through James Madison. And it seemed very much headed for overtime, this, this, this game, which uh, Ajax probably would have loved because, you know, there's the Dutch Cup final here on Sunday. I mean, did not get that far because Pereira scores the winner two minutes before the end. And so Leicester City continue their little fairy tale as well because I think it's the first time they make it to a semi final. Roma. They made absolutely clear that they are better than Bode. For once, I think the sixth one still stings. I was a little bit, I was actually a little bit so, 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 so surprised that they stopped at four and did not really go for five. But immediately, Tammy Abraham after five minutes sets it up and then Zaniolo with three wonderful goals and all three differently scored. I uh, particularly like the second one with the little chip over after Zalewski pulls the ball through through him there. The first quarter for Bode is re uh, they use for a count, 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 take. Roma, as I said, fully deserving um, going through in that one. Again, uh, Bode... It's. I heard. Yeah, uh, I heard this this week. The ridiculous argument. The body were so good because they're in preseason. And Roma is tired. I'm sorry. If you're in the middle of the season, you should be much better than a team uh, that just is starting preseason. And I think that this will show. And then the um, long travel and also the atmosphere at the Olympico. If it's full, is something else. Pauk had Marseille right where they wanted them. They had. Chances, especially this Crespo guy uh, in the opening minutes. Free header from very close range and he puts it over the bar. Uh, 
I was uh, was maddening in many in, in many ways. Then uh, Payet in the thirty fourth makes it uh, one nil for uh, for Marseille and Pau just whatever they tried, they just could not hit the goal or could not put the ball in the internet. And I thought at the moment that Crespo was missing that one shot. I really thought, yeah, this is not. If this goes in. That is going Pauk's way. If you, if this is not going on, this might be a hard day to get uh, goals, and that's exactly how it proved because the chances were there for for Park to score at least one. Marseille probably the more mature team overall, but I think it was well in there for Park to advance over uh, the French. Did not happen. The closest game uh, in the Europa League, where I was afraid that I might, uh, might, might, might need to get a jersey, was Slavia against Feyenoord, which was a very, very tight uh, contest, marked by bad uh, defensive errors. I mean, Dessa's first in this goal in the second I minute mean, was the only proper goal earlier because the, uh, the equalized by Traore was a horrible back pass that just got stuck in the grass, seems seemingly. It was 1 1. Um, at a point where Slavia deserved the equalizer, one has to also say. Uh, but then um, Dessus gets his second one after a horrible pass by the goalkeeper out. Uh, it's intercepted by Dessus, who makes it 2-2-1. And this is a goal goalkeeper that already twice made errors in Rotterdam to give Feyenoord uh, uh, the advantage. And at that, at that point, it wasn't easy for Feyenoord to you know, play the counter-attack. It was over a very, very balanced tie, this one. Uh, I would say that Feyenoord had more of the game, was maybe more proactive, but Slavia was definitely uh, digging in and giving it their all to win this game. In the end, it's Sinistera who makes it 3-1. Very happy for Feyenoord to make it through. As I said, I would have loved to see both Dutch teams advancing. Did not happen, but I think we still have a very, very uh, nice semifinal lineup. A very eclectic one. And overall, I was uh, look looking at all the three co -com competitions, the so the suppliers. We have four different suppliers in the Champions League, and so on and so forth. They are all. I think Adidas has three, and uh, Nike have two teams. But we have all kinds of suppliers in there, which for a collector like, like me makes it also very interesting. Uh, but what's more is that we get a very interesting semi-final line because the two better teams, although they are all very, very even as we will see, play each other between Leicester and Roma. I think that will be a def, 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 definitely an interesting one. And Feyenoord and Marseille, those are two former winners of the European Cup, so also looking forward uh, to that one. Uh, seems to be all finely balanced, and I think the lineup for the first lineup in the Conference League, you have um, four teams from big countries, and it sounds kind of tasty, almost a bit tastier than other than the other two competitions because there's a little a teeny bit of a sameness. This is more eclectic. This is, looks more like a European competition, and as I said, it's very even. If you look at the winning percentages, uh. Almost that even. Leicester Roma is Leicester is just a tad favored over Roma, uh, and that's why they are tad favored uh, to win the competition over Roma. And Feyenoord, yes, are a little bit more favorites over Marseille. So Marseille is by the rating the weakest team in there. Although I'm, I think I might overall agree, but I think that Feyenoord is a bit more of a flawed team. I think that 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 definitely the. Whoever wins the Leicester Roma tie will actually be the favorite uh, going into the final, but. It is exciting nonetheless. So yeah, that was it. Again, a kind of a longish video, but I think it was fully deserved there. So many nice storylines, and I think there was quite some interesting uh, stuff in there as well. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!